Well, ladies and gentlemen, Purdue Warrior here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister and brother. Trusting that you are doing well. I'm not sure if it's me or my glasses. It's a little bit cloudy. Let me check it. I just cleaned my glasses. So how are you? It's raining here in Central Valley. So how is it in your neighborhood? How is it in your neighborhood? Let me put it like this. Okay. Don't know. But nevertheless, I hope that you're having a super awesome day. So may I ask you, do you, do you study, study, study the word? Remember, we must, must study the Lord, the word. And we know it is so late on planet Earth. And the solution is Jesus Christ. And he states, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the rain, Father God. As you are sending the rain here on the valley, Father, cleansing, Father God, we ask you to pour that rain in our hearts, Father God, and cleanse us and purify us, Father God. Right now, Father God, I also ask you right now that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you'll be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so scripture reading is coming from... Let's see, John chapter 15, verses 7. John 15, verses 7. And it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Mm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. Because you know we can read something, but not necessarily do it. But if you read it and don't apply it, then how is it going to benefit you, right? So it's the same thing with the Word of God. We need to read it. We need to apply it to our own personal life so that we can get the benefit. And also, while we're getting the benefit, we'll be benefiting other people because they will see something different about you. And then they will ask the question, what is so different about you? You know, they want some of whatever it is. And you know, you, all you can point them back is to the Word of God. You know, seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And I love this one. Same information, Steps to Christ. It's just a different cover. This is an excellent book. This is one of the book. I mean, this book saved me so many times from doing foolishness. So it's, it's a good book to read. It's a good book to read. So nevertheless, let's get into it because we have a, a wealth of information to cover. So of course, you know, this is a review of angels from the captivity to John the Baptist. This is a review. So those of you that probably just stopped by for the first time... Uh, you can either scroll down on my Facebook um, wall or you can go over to YouTube under Burdell Warrior and you will find the in-depth lesson there as well. So let's get into it. And then this is part is Daniel and, the, and his three companions. And it says, four Hebrew children could not allow selfish motives and love of amusement to occupy the golden moments of this life. That is the opening point. Here is point number one. They work with a willing heart and, and a ready mind. There is no higher standard than every Christian may attain. God requires of every Christian scholar more than has been given him. Okay, so let's move on over to point number, point number two. This is under Nebuchadnezzar, the fiery furnace. And it says, in the day of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so is the closing period of earth history. The Lord will work mightily in behalf of those who stand steadfastly for the right. Hmm. For the right, my sister and brother. So we have to remember, as we're living in the last days of earth history, we have to remember the three Hebrew boy that they stood for right. The state, king, whatever, even though that you uh, you state the decree, and even though if God doesn't uh, deliver us, we sh will not bow down to your statue. So we as individuals, as children of God, as kingdom believers, need to get to that point. Point, okay, so here is Belshazzar fe feast. 
So this is Belsage the Feast. And let me see, this is point number three. It says, whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed in scarlet and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom and you know you know who became the third uh, ruler in the kingdom right that was daniel so then this is daniel in the lion's den point number four remember this is a quick review if you want the in-depth lesson study you just scroll down on my facebook wall or go over to youtube under burdell warrior you find the lessons there it says with the full knowledge of the king's decree he, Daniel, shall bow before his God, his window being open. He considers supplication to the God of the sufficient importance to sacrifice his life rather than to relinquish it. And then he goes on. On the account of his praying to God, he was cast into the lion's den. Mm. Here, yeah, move on over to point number five. Point number five. And this is under Gabriel sent to explain the vision of Daniel 8. Uh, for this particular one, this was on Wednesday, um, Wednesday, November 24th. This was the lesson. And uh, if you scroll down either on the Facebook, I also put down there a, uh, a video from Pastor C. Stephen Bohr. And uh, she, he kind of go into uh, in-depth lesson study about this as well. So I put it down there for just a reference point. And it state here, the answer that was given unto 2,300 days, 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed, filled him with perplexity. Okay, and then this one here was... Uh, that was a one part that was a one part lesson so like I stated if you want to know more information about the 2300 day prophecy just look on my Facebook wall or you can go to my YouTube under Burdell Warrior and you shall find this under uh, Gabriel's sent to explain the vision of Daniel 8 and we have several pastors that talks about that one comes to mind is Jeremiah Davis uh, he's a, a great uh, pastor that goes, uh, he deals with a lot of end time um, prophecy. So this one here is on, this is point number six, point number six, let me drink some water. The struggle for influence over the king of Persia. It says, heavenly angel, no, heavenly agency have to contend with hindrance before the purpose of God is fulfilled in its time. The king of Persia was controlled by the highest of all evil angel. He refused, as did Pharaoh, to obey the word of the Lord. And um, if you want more in depth and see what Gabriel state, and then you need to scroll down. And this was a one part. And then here is part uh, point number seven. The second temple, the second temple. The second temple did not equal the first in magnificence, nor was it hallowed by those visible tokens of divine presence which pertain to the first temple. And we know the first temple was Solomon's temple, right? And so that is point number seven, point number eight, point number eight. This is Ezra, Ezra. The children of captivity who had returned with Ezra offer burnt offering unto the Lord, unto the God of Israel, unto the God of Israel, for a sin offering and as a token of their gratitude and thanksgiving for the protection of holy angels during the journey. And if you have the book, Prophet and Kings, this is page on 619, 619. And then let's move on over to Nehemiah. And this is point number nine. But in Nehemiah's seasons of retirement, concealing from human sight, many were the prayers, the confession, the tears, heard and witnessed by God and angels. So let's move on over to point number 10. And this is the division of Zechariah. And he said, I lift up my mind let me go. I lift up my eye, my eyes again, says Zechariah, 
and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So that's point number 10, point number 11. The vision of Joshua and the angels. And the state here. The scene of Satan's accusation was presented before the prophet. I think that's all I have. Let me go back. Let me go on. He said, he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Okay, and that was Zechariah, the vision of Joshua and the angel. And this is coming from uh, Zechariah um, chapter 2 and then also Zechariah chapter 13. And you will find the in-depth lesson, but I think you could just scroll down on Facebook or go over to YouTube. And this was a two-part lesson, a two-part lesson. So let's move on over to point number 12. Point number 12. Let's see. And this is under the vision of the seven lamps and the two olive tree. And it says, Then answer I and said unto him, what are these two olive tree upon the right hand of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? So you have to see the scroll down to find the answers to that. Okay. And um, I believe that was something else I have there. So then this is point number 13. And this is under angels in the time of Esther. This is one of my favorite Bible story. And uh, it says, angels that exalted in strength were commissioned to protect the people of God. And the plots of the adversary returned upon their own heads. Because mm. you know we have people that's plotting against God's people. But God is the one that's going to deal with them. Right? God is going to deal with them. And then here is the last one. Um. Um, let me see. This is the last one. This is number 14. Review number 14. And it says the father, the father of John the Baptist. And it state here, the question of Zechariah, the angel said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Mm. So I will stop there. And that was one lesson. So here is my closing point. Um, this is still under John, the father of John the Baptist. And it says, in, in John the Baptist, God raised up a messenger to prepare the way of the Lord. So it's the same thing with us as Christian, as kingdom believers. God is raising up individual men and women to proclaim his last message. So who are you willing to answer the call? That's what I have here. Are you willing to answer the call? So when we, you know, so when we think about it, I mean, can you imagine though, if you go on, I know I'm quite a, um, a bit of time I spend on YouTube. And as you see, so many people are coming out and they're proclaiming this and they're proclaiming it. So God is raising up people, my sister and brother, to warn individual, to warn uh, his people that they need to come out of the false system and come under the banner of the Lord under the banner of the Lord God has children in all these different dom de dom uh, denomination and he's calling them out because it's a false system that most people most of his children are in a false system so he is calling them out so I was going to read I was thinking if I should do it after all this but since it's a part of the lesson Let's go to Revelation 14, Revelation 14, and this is the three angels message, Revelation 13. Let's start at verses 6, 6 to, I have 6 to 12, and it states, remember, like I state, God is waking up his, his children, he's waking them up to come out of the false system. A lot of people don't realize that they're going to church, but it's a false system. 
okay so that he calling them out of the false system so he stayed here revelation 14 verse 6 and it says and i saw another angels flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying with a loud voice fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters verses 8 and they follow another angel saying babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she had made all nation drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the third angels followed them saying Okay, let me go back. And the third angels follow them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in their forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Here's verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they had no rest day nor night, who worshipped the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. Here is the 12th verse. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Mm. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So my sister, my brother, God is calling his children out of the false system. God created, he had two institutions. He had marriage, and we know what happened to the marriage. Uh, men say uh, marriage is between, it, it could be a man or man to man, woman to woman. God state is marriage was between a male and a female, male and a female. The next institution is Sabbath. God created the Sabbath. Remember, there was no Jews there. It was just Adam and Eve. God created the Sabbath. And he rested the seventh day according to the scripture. And you can find this in, um, in Exodus 20. No, Exodus, yeah, 20 verses 8 through 11 talks about Remember the Sabbath day, my sister and brother. You that are going to get the seal of God by obeying all of his laws, all of his laws, and that's including the fourth commandment. Or you're going to receive the mark, the mark, because you have decided that you're going to disobey God and go with the false system. That is a false system. God says Saturday and man says Sunday. So where the where is the mark of the beast line? The mark of the beast when it becomes law, my system, brother. God, this is right, right now. All the stuff about um, being get a jab, not getting a jab. We are fighting amongst each other. People are saying, well, our uh, family members saying, well, if you didn't get the jab, you cannot come over. I can, I cannot be in your presence. All this stuff, my system, brother, is is going. It's getting to the point that family is attacking family, friends attacking family, and not realizing. We, uh, they are not your enemy. They are not your enemy. They made a decision for their life for themselves. You made a decision. So why is it that you can't uh, honor their wishes and you and they you honor or they honor you honor their wishes and they honor your wishes, right? Because we all have to give an account. God gave us a com common sense to make a decision. So how could you stay well if you didn't get the job? You cannot come over. You know, so why are we fighting amongst each other? We are missing the point. We are not the enemy, my sister and brother. There's a bigger force. It's a, there's a, a demonic force, and the government is a part of that force, if you look at it. Because when someone forced their opinions on you, and you have no choice, what is that? The God is a God of love. He does not force any of us to accept him. He gives you all the, how would I say, he gives you all the choices, all the option. He said, read my word. If you find, if you read my word, you will fall in love with me and you will come out of the false system. So when it becomes law that we are forced, like I said, this is just a dress rehearsal. Whether you, first it was mass, then no mass, then the next minute it was jab, no jab. And people are fighting about, uh, amongst themselves about that, right? Not realizing there's a bigger issue. So once you do that and you give in and you give in and you give in, 
Okay, then what else? Then what else is there, my sister and brother? Remember the three Hebrew boys. Remember Daniel. Remember, we got the stories in the Bible. Okay, so the final is about worship. God says Saturday, man says Sunday. And when it becomes law, you hear what I says, when it becomes law for children, of, for, for, for people to decide whether to go um, follow God on, uh, based on the Sabbath, based on his word, based on the Ten Commandments, or reject the fourth commandment and go completely what man says. When that happened, my sister and brother, when we are forced to worship on Sunday, Sunday is the mark of the beast because you stating, even though you know the truth, you are um, saying, well, you know what? I don't want to listen to that man says this and I have to feed my family and I have to do this and how am I going to provide? My sister and brother, God always provide for his family, always through. You can read all the scripture. It might look like it's a, it's a dark day and God always shows up, right? So when it becomes law, my sister and brother, Sunday will be the mark of the beast because you have stated you have rejected God and you went along with the system that are forcing you to go against God. Remember, there's two forces. You're either going to be on God's side or you're going to be on Satan's side. There's only two. God wants worship. Satan wants worship. Satan does need a little piece of you in order for you to be lost. God needs all of you, all of me, in order to save me, in order to save you, okay? So that is the that is where we are going to. Yes, and so we got a little bit more time. God is patient and he's holding back the wind of strife. He's holding it back because there's individuals that have not heard about Jesus, have not made a decision to follow him. But once everyone in the whole entire world have gotten uh, made a decision, then Jesus will come back. But praise God that he has holding back the winds of strife for just a little bit longer so that we as believers can go ahead and call someone and say, my sister and brother, you know, here is a track. My sister and brother, can we study? Can we do some Bible study? That is what we need to be doing right now, calling individual and encourage them. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Encouraging individual to pick up their Bible and study for yourself. I am not telling you to go and join no church or go to a church. I'm not saying any of that, okay? Because I've got some churches, Adventist churches, that I will not go to. So, okay? I will not go to, okay? Because not everyone is 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 uh, want to do right, my sister and brother. So we as individuals need to make a decision for ourselves. Study for yourself because sometimes you go to the churches and they are the worst place for you to be. I'm just saying, just saying. Hello, let's speak the truth here. And so we as individuals need to study the word. God says, follow me, follow him, follow him, my sister and brother, before it is too late. I don't know why I need to go into all that, but nevertheless, praise and glory and honor to the Lord. So here is the devotion, the price of our redemption. For our conversation is in heaven. For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is coming from Philippians 3.20. Let me drink some water. And it's stake here. Let's bow for prayer. Father God, I ask you, Father God, to continue to take full control. I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, it says, The Christian ascended, his hands outstretched to bless the disciples. A cloud of angels received him and hid him from their sight. As the disciples looked with straining eyes for the last glimpse of their descending Lord, Two angels from two angels from rejoicing crowd stood by them and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heavens. And this is coming from Acts chapter one, verses eleven. The disciples was filled with the great joy. Over and over again, they repeated the words Christ had spoken to them in the last lessons as recorded in the 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th chapter of John. And everyone has something to say about the instructions, especially with regards to the words of the 14th, 
So the so then it's the 14, 15, 16, and 17 chapter. So then it says special words with regards to the words of the 14th chapter of John. And this is uh, verses 1 and 3. And this is start it starts like this Revelation 14. I'm sorry, John 14, chapter 1 and 3. Chapter 1 reads, it says, Let, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Also believe in me. That's a, that's a, just the first verse, but you can go ahead and um, look it up in your Bible. John 14, verses 1 and 3. It says, The promise that he could come again, and also the thought that he had left them his peace, filled their hearts with joy. Satan has made men and women his prisoners and claimed them as his subject. When Christ saw that there was no human being able to, able to be man's intercessor he himself entered the fiery conflict and battle with satan the first begotten of god was the only one who could liberate those whom by adam's sin has been brought into subjection to satan the son of god gave satan every opportunity to try all his art upon him the enemy had tempted the angels in heaven, and afterwards the first Adam. Adam fell, and Satan supposed he could succeed in ensnaring Christ after he assumed humanity. All the fallen host looked upon his engagement as an opportunity to gain the supremacy over Christ. They had longed for a chance to show their enmity against God. When the lips of Christ was sealed in death, Satan and his angels imagined that they had obtained the victory. It was the thought of standing under the guilt of the world that brought the inexpressible anguish to Christ. In the death struggle, the Son of God could rely only upon his heavenly Father and let me go back. In the death struggle, the Son of God could rely only upon his heavenly Father. All was by fate. He himself was a ransom, a gift, given for the freeing of the captive. By this own arm, he has brought salvation to the children of men. But at what a cost to himself. What a spectacle was this conflict. It resulted in demonstrating to the heavenly universe the judgment, the justice of God. Let me go back. What a spectacle was this conflict. It resulted in demonstrating to heavenly universe the justice of God. And then she has on here the unchanging law of God. So that concludes my devotion, my sister and brother, the price of our redemption. So God the Father gave us his son and he paid it all, my sister and brother. So each one of us have an opportunity to decide for ourselves which side we're going to be on. But it's not a thing that people should be forcing us to do. Like, what was it? One of the king, I believe, I think was it Nebuchadnezzar, forced and said, Oh, Daniel, Daniel, God was the true God, and he's for, he said everybody has to be worshiping that particular God. God does not operate like that, my sister and brother. He does not force his will on us. He's a gentleman. He gave us chances for us to make a decision. He gave us the whole Bible. You go out in creation, you look at the mountains, you say, oh, this is so beautiful. It has to be someone greater than us that created these things, right? And when you look at it, you can say, there is a God. There is a God. He sits high, but he looks low, and he has uh, He has answered our prayer. But it's for us to search the scripture for ourselves, my sister and brother. So, so that's what I am here to do is call your attention Let's go back to basic. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. I, you know, like I keep on saying, my, my topics are not popular. So my topics, more my, I would say, uh, my ministry is for specific individual, individual that want to have a close, a deeper relationship with the Lord. Individual that wants to start a ministry, a prayer ministry, 
uh, for the Lord. Those are the individuals that I am reaching out to. So for that, since I know my audience, it's not for everyone because I am not the type of, I'm not coming, I'm not here to water down the, I would just say water down or make some compromises. I'm giving you the straight gospel, but here is the thing. Uh, most people, most people are, how would you say, are in a state of, um, com not compromise, but in a state of, they don't want to face reality. So they listen to these reality shows and you see this and you see that and you're thinking, oh yeah, that is so great. But that is not real, my sister and brother. That is fake. That's fake. So people prefer to hear the fake news than the real news. And you, you're not going to find the, the the news news on the news on the news on the news station. You have to go outside of those things in order to get the truth. It's the same thing with the word of God. Most pastors today are not speaking the truth. So you got to go outside of your environment go outside your neighborhood to get the information that you need in order for you to make uh, have all the information have all the research so that you can make the right decision for yourself and for your family but like i said most people are not searching they just want to be fed you know just want to be fed most people go to church and they even open the bibles nobody's taking any notes they just sit there it's just like an entertainment people want to be entertained you, you not entertainers are not going to make, make, make it to heaven because this is not an entertainment. This is a relationship. This is a, a close personal relationship with the Lord. Only way you're going to be get close and personal with anyone, you have to actually go with them, spend time with them, right? So it's the same thing with us. We have to take time out and spend time in the word of God. If you look at the hourglass, see the measuring glass, we are running out of time. If you see that? We are running out of time, my sister and brother. So that's why you see there's so much deception. There's so much, how is it, amusement. There's so much stuff to to shiny object. There's so much sign shiny object. Because it's there, because Satan knows how short his time is. He knows, but then us as children of God, we don't realize that the hour is late. So we sit back and we have the TV on, reality TV or the soaps, or the movies or whatever and you just sit there waste two hours but then you cannot take one hour or half an hour to study the word of god or when someone comes and talk about the word of god it's like oh, okay i don't need to hear that or that's too long but yet you sit in the front of the tv for about an hour two hours listening to something that is how we say empty calories empty calories like eating a bag of chips is empty calories so most people today want empty calories. Just want to be sit there and be um, uh, entertained. And God is not about entertaining you, my sister and brother. He's about you searching for yourself. So they state that they had something. State that if you want to hide something from people, putting it put it in a book. <laughs> God, most people don't like to read. Most people will not take time to read. They want you to sit there and entertain, entertain. And we have to come out of that. This is not an entertainment. Church is supposed to, not never supposed to be an entertainment. Church is supposed to be a place that you go through, that the pastor bring a word, and it 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 brings you to repentance. But we don't have those type. Most of those church, most churches, we don't have those type of sermon. We have a good feeling, and that's it. No, my sister, and brother, our relationship with God is so much deeper than that. You jumping, carrying on, and wave, raising your hand. No, my sister and brother, that is not it. It's not it. We have to go deeper, 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 deeper. So here is my closing. Here is my closing. You know I could be up here for hours. So here is my closing. Chiefs of sinners. Chief of sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Die that I might live on high. Die that I might never die. As the branch is to the vine, I am his and he is mine. Oh, the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heavens above, deeper than the deepest sea, lasting as eternity. Love that found me wondrous thought, found me when I sought him not. Here's the last verse. Chief of sinner though I be, 
Christ is all in all to me. All my wants to him are known. All my sorrows are his own. Safe with him from earthly strife. He sustained the hidden life. Mm. Chief of sinner. Yes, my sister, we are chief of sinner. We have sinned and come and fall short of the glory of God. And the only solution is that we repent and turn back to our first love. And that is Jesus Christ. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message. I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God. Continue to be with my sisters, my brother, Father God, the ones that are here right now and those that will be stopping by in the future, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you have already provided the answers to all our uh, issues that we might be having right now, Father God. So, Father God, if we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, I ask you, Father God, that you will wash us and make us whiter than snow. And once you've done that, Father God, take the empty vessels, Father God, Fill us up with the love, with the peace, the joy, with the love that we need for one another. Father God, at the end, we continue, Father God. We love you. We love you. And we continue to give you all the praise, Father God, the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so if this was a blessing to you, can you do me a favor? Can you hit the like button? Can you make a comment? Can you hit the share button? Follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the bell notification. Hit the subscribe button. So when my videos goes up, you'll be the first to be notified. And thank you so much, my sister and brother, for going over to my YouTube channel and helping me grow my YouTube station. Station. And it's not station. It's a channel. That's right, right, right. So with that, if you look on my either my Facebook, Facebook wall, my Facebook bio, you find a free gift that I have for you, and it's our uh, uh, rebrand.ly uh, backslash praising God. It's a free gift for you right there. And if you scroll along on my YouTube uh, channel, you'll find it there as well. So thank you so much, my sister and brother, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. And then I forgot to tell you what the topic is for tomorrow. We are going to be in chapter 13. And it's still, we're still in the truth about angels, the truth about angels. And this is the incarnation, the incarnation, a profound mystery, the incarnation, a profound mystery. That will be our topic for tomorrow. So, but before you go, my sister, brother, may I have a hug? May I have a hug? So here we go. One, two. Thank you so much, my sister and brother. I love you. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.